from the carpet bag, she took out seven flannel nightgowns, four cotton ones, a pair of boots, a set of dominoes, two bathing caps, and a postcard album. Last of all came a folding camp bedstead with blankets and elder down complete. And this she set down between John's cot and Barbara's. Jane and Michael sat hugging themselves and watching. It was also surprising that they could find nothing to say. But they knew, both of them, that something strange and wonderful had happened at number 17, Cherry Tree Lane. Mary Poppins, slipping one of the flannel nightgowns over her head, began to underdress underneath it as though it were a tent. Michael, charmed by this strange new arrival, unable to keep silent any longer, called to her. Mary Poppins, he cried, you'll never leave us, will you? There was no reply from under the nightgown. Michael could not bear it. You won't leave us, will you? He called anxiously. Mary Poppins' head came out of the top of the nightgown. She looked very fierce. One word more from that direction, she said threateningly, and I'll call the policeman. I, I was only saying, began Michael meekly, that we hoped you wouldn't be going away soon. He stopped, feeling very red and confused. Mary Poppins stared from him to Jane in silence. Then she sniffed. I'll stay till the wind changes, she said shortly, and she blew out her candle and got into bed. That's all right, said Michael, half to himself and half to Jane, but Jane wasn't listening. She was thinking about all that had happened and wondering. And that is how Mary Poppins came to live at number 17, Cherry Tree Lane. And although they sometimes found themselves wishing for the quieter, more ordinary days when Katie Nana ruled the household, everybody on the whole was glad of Mary Poppins' arrival. Mr. Banks was glad because as she arrived by herself and did not hold up the traffic, he had not had to tip the policeman. Mrs. Banks was glad because she was able to tell everybody that her children's nurse was so fashionable that she didn't believe in giving references. Mrs. Brill and Ellen were glad because they could drink strong cups of tea all day in the kitchen and no longer needed to preside at nursery suppers. Roberts and I was glad too because Mary Poppins had only one pair of shoes and those she polished herself. But nobody ever knew what Mary Poppins felt about it for Mary Poppins never told anybody anything. <laughs>